Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions, a training center for dentists to teach you how to improve your hand skills and your knowledge in general dentistry. We're in San Dimas, California, and today we're going to talk about the class 2 prep with just two burrs. The prep today is going to be on Columbia tooth number 4, DO. And it's important to remember that the outline form has got to be done very precisely on this small tooth. One of the important features is the dovetail. We're going to want to make sure that the dovetail wall, that mesial wall, is located midway between the mesial pit and the height of the marginal ridge. Your extensions will be approximately 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters, and this is the RGS1, which measures 0.4. So if you can, you can make some marks on here. You don't have to. I do this mainly for demonstration purposes to give you an idea of what the outline form is going to be. It's important to respect the triangular ridges with your outline form and to go around them but not cut through them and have everything flow. We're going to use the 330 and the 245 burrs. And you notice that the 330 burr is pear-shaped, as is the 245. The 330 burr, if you were to measure it here, you could see that it's a little longer than the RGS-1, so it's 1.6 millimeters in length versus uh, the RGS-1, which is 1.5. The 245 is 3 millimeters in length, as you can see here by looking at the RGS-3, and it's less than 1 millimeter in diameter, and actually it's 0.8 millimeters at its widest area. So let's start with the 330. And the best place to start on any class 2 is in the area near the box. Because if you start in the mesial pit area, you can overextend into the dovetail. So we're just going to go ahead and make a punch cut here to the full depth of the flutes of the burr. We're not going to go shallow because, you know, you go shallow, you end up getting wider and wider as you go deeper. I'm going to verify that I am 1.5 millimeters and we're going to extend over to this mesial stopping short of our intended location. So we'll start in that initial punch cut and we're going to move the burr right down the middle of the central groove between the cusps to obtain this initial outline. And now we're ready to start the dovetail. So the dovetail is just going to be an extension facially not lingually, but just facially here, and it's going to parallel the marginal ridge. Notice how I'm tipping the burr, I'm accentuating this tip so that that wall will be slightly divergent, perhaps three degrees. Then we're going to move the burr back over towards the proximal box and widen just a little bit right near the box, just merely to give yourself a little bit more access for the next step, which will be performed with the 245 burr. So here we are with the 245 burr, and I like to hold the burr up along the side of the tooth and get an idea how far gingivally do I need to extend in order to break contact at the desired amount, which would be 0.5 millimeters. And I can hold the burr up sideways like this and go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to drop the burr down to the depth of the flutes and I'll still be okay. So I'm not trying to tip the burr, I'm just going vertically here holding the handpiece in such a way that the burr is going to be perpendicular to the occlusal table and start widening this proximal area. It's always a good idea to leave a little bit of a shell against the adjacent tooth so that you can avoid having any issues with chipping or nicks or scratches on that adjacent tooth. I think if you do this technique by leaving the little shell behind as long as possible, the chance of you causing an unsightly mar or some kind of a defect on the adjacent tooth is definitely decreased. People oftentimes worry that they're going to go too deep axially. In other words, they're going to go too close to the pulp that direction. Uh, I don't think that, that is an issue as long as you keep the shell quite narrow and understand that 
by the time you break contact and uh, move the burr mesial distally and buccolingually, you really have a lot of room in there uh, to move the burr around. So I really can do this with quite a bit of confidence that we're not going to be going too deep axially. Remember, when we use the word depth, we're referring to a direction towards the pulp, not towards the gingiva. So when I say the word axial depth, I'm referring to how far you're going in towards the pulp in that box, not how far you're going towards the gingiva. So now you can see I'm starting to tip the bird just a little bit as I approach the functional cusp wall, which would be the lingual wall in this particular case. The facial wall will be nearly perpendicular relative to the gingival, where the lingual proximal wall will form an acute angle, slightly acute, probably about 85 degrees or so. In so doing, you will obtain the appropriate amount of proximal box clearance and enhance your retention. So even though we've dropped the burr down uh, quite a ways, we still haven't broken through the gingival. And it's really common on Columbia dentiforms that the contacts are fairly tight and, uh, and sometimes they're long occlusal gingivally and you need to just keep extending the burr further. There is no standard measurement for the height of the axial wall. The axial wall height will be determined by two factors, by the contact, which we need to break, and by the depth of the pulpal, which should be 1.5. So after we break the gingival contact and we have 1.5 pulpal depth, the axial wall height will be whatever it's supposed to be. It may be a millimeter, it may be four millimeters. It all has to do with the environment in which the proximal contact is located. And here is a enamel hatchet, and we're just using this to just twist, twist it a little bit to break away that little shell and this is pretty easy to do and oftentimes when you do this you'll be able to see that you obtained the initial gingival clearance and this is a really good moment because you know your box is getting close to its final location obviously we have these bird beaks these little, little lips which we're going to remove here with the off angle chisel and this is a 44 off angle chisel and this will be utilized to chop away the undermined enamel and tooth structure you see on both the facial and the lingual. You could also use a bin angle chisel or an enamel hatchet for this purpose. Uh, hopefully whatever dental school you're going to or testing at will provide you with good sharp instruments. It's a little bit disturbing to me to learn that many of the instruments in dental schools are not adequately sharpened and it's uh, something that I think we as educators need to work on a little bit. When I'm checking the depth of the pulpal, I'm a little shallow here. Do you notice how that's my shallow point? Even though I was 1.5 millimeters at the box area on the pulpal, I'm not deep enough in the dovetail. So I'm going to have to deepen that during this refinement step. Now I'm using here a friction grip push button attachment for the slow speed motor. So this is something that you can just pull off here and uh, replace that with a latch or with a straight or a nose cone. And you can then uh, push button and put the burr right back in there like that. It's pretty nice uh, that we have something in dentistry that many people don't know about that will allow us to use all of our friction grip burrs in a slow speed format. And uh, if you're not using an electric handpiece in your office, I think you're really missing out on something incredible, but sometimes the reality is we just don't have those things. So if you're practicing at home, or if you're in a dental school that still has the turbine systems like I'm doing here in my teaching center, uh, this is a great alternative. I'm gonna switch over with the slow speed to the 245 burr. And I'm going to do a few things. One thing I'm going to do is make sure that the axial wall is tipping inward towards the occlusal. Another thing I'm going to do is make sure that that lingual proximal wall is leaning towards the facial. And I'm creating right there an acute angle relative to the gingival and a right angle with 
the buccal wall towards uh, relative to the to the gingival. So just a little bit of refining. And I think this is probably the time when you need to be really careful about hitting the adjacent tooth. You're, you've come so far and the prep is looking like it's going to be one of your better preps. And you know you need to do more work in the box, but there is a fear that you'll hit the adjacent tooth. I totally understand what that feels like. And even after many years of practice, I still maintain a high level of caution whenever I'm doing refinement and I'm afraid that the burr could inadvertently scratch the adjacent tooth. The objective, of course, is just never to hit the adjacent tooth at all, even in the slightest way. And I'm using the 44S off-angle chisel again to do some further refinement in the box, make sure that the line angles are, are fairly well established, the gingival wall is flat, and now we're ready to move on to the gingival margin trimmer to initiate the axial pulpal bevel. Let's start in the middle and rotate the instrument towards the lingual and then turn the instrument around to the other side, start in the middle and rotate towards the other side. And you see how it just, just peels off that little piece. So don't scrape it and, and overdo this particular step, but just do it very carefully uh, with uh, minimal movements of the hand instrument. And now I'm just removing any loose enamel rods out the gingival, in this case, uh, loose plastic rods, <laughs> and then uh, turning the instrument around and uh, rotating it towards the other side. This will also increase your gingival clearance slightly. So you can see the preparation is, is nearly complete. It's a good idea before you're finished doing the final outline and any little touches to check things. Uh, the axial depth or gingival width is less than 1.5 and it was more than one in that previous uh, instrument showing you that we're looking for 1.2 to 1.4 of axial depth or let's call it gingival width if that's easier to to understand uh, and then the hatchet can be used to do a little bit of cleaning up here and there watch your time and make sure you're not going over but this would be a good time to uh, spend doing some refinement cleaning out the debris in the preparation don't leave debris behind that makes it look very messy so if you can blow it out of there or maybe get um, a q-tip well, some alcohol or some kind of a surface cleaner to clean it out that's always a nice thing but it looks to me like the preparation has met our requirements today and um, that was pretty fun pretty simple and I wish you all the very best as you go out into the world and take your exams and pass your competencies and things like that I'm rooting for you. I would love to meet you in person someday. Thanks so much.